All right, Simon, so we both answered no to the question of whether or not our brains and our senses have access to anything independent uh, of, you know, themselves. And from there, though, I think we both go in a different direction um, because you want to remove the need for creation from the equation. Uh, you do not see a need for evolution. And you point to the brain, uh, to the neurons, as being the center of the observation which collapses one particular universe into existence. But what are those neurons? Where did they come from? Well, they're cells, aren't they? And depending on how they're perturbed by the cells around them, they choose to fire or not to fire. But what is this, this cell by itself? Where did it come from? And, you know, modern evolutionary biology tells us that um, it evolved. It came from an ancestor, um, ultimately a, a common ancestor that it shares with not only other neurons, but every other kind of cell in every other kind of living organism. They all differentiated and became specialized, um, but they still all go together because they have moved through time dancing with one another and you know the dance gets more and more intricate and complex but uh, still in perfect harmony there's no gaps you know not that there's perfect fitness in the sense that the organism is uh, perfectly adapted to its environment we see evidence of maladaptation all the time, or just useless adaptation. Um, so everything doesn't fit in that sense. It fits in the sense that nothing is left out. Like you say, there can be no outside to the universe. That would be like a god, like a, you know, an intelligence that existed before or without everything that we know and can see and that um, doesn't really make a lot of people too comfortable I mean some people are really addicted to that idea but other people find it uh, it's sort of world denying saying oh this isn't real the inside isn't real it's the outside of the universe that matters it's heaven that matters inside you know the deeper you go, you just get closer and closer to hell. So some people desperately need creation. A beginning. Which, you know, of course it implies an ending. So with anti-creationism, uh, you're also proclaiming anti-destructionism, right? I'm going to link uh, an article over there. No, actually over there. <laughs> well, it's over there now, but it's going to be over there for you. Uh, because we have different points of view, different uh, locations in space-time from which we observe the world, apparently. Uh, but in this, this article, it's uh, from the New York Times, and it's about some papers written by some theoretical physicists concerning uh, Boltzmann's theory of entropy, uh, second law of thermodynamics, and uh, basically there are calculations which um, purport to prove that it is more likely for a universe to be created um, 
just in the form of a, of a brain about the size of this three pound uh, organ in here in empty space as it, it's more than likely that that will happen than that an entire coherent universe will ever be created um, such as the one that we naively assume we are in now now this I think has a connection to to what you're kind of saying uh, here Simon that um, there may just be only a brain and not only may there just be that it may be far far more likely that that would be what this is than that it would be an actual universe that we this brain is contained in but of course all of this um, is true only if entropy is the only um, the only force operating in the universe in the sense that you know, in, in the sense of a force as the only tendency, the only direction of this universe, it runs down. It loses complexity. Um, if probability is what matters, um, then the greater probability is that uh, disorder will be the end result uh, of all of this. Um, and, you know, there are ways to keep the Big Bang cosmology and still see entropy as the main driving force, um, the main direction of the universe. Uh, you say that, you know, there must have just been a superabundance of complexity um, right at the very start of the universe, right after the Big Bang. Um, the universe was so ordered that now, after 13.7 billion years, it's it's just falling from, you know, this this hyper-organized state into greater and greater states of disorder. Um, and you know, dark energy seems to be that kind of a of a thing now. I mean, we don't know much about it, but that seems to be the reason why entropy um, is the rule. Everything just flies apart, and eventually nothing can see anything else and it's it that's over and, and then another one happens um, but when that other one happens that other one could just be an observer a brain doesn't necessarily and in fact is less likely to be um, an entire universe this is the cosmology that's coming out of um, the, the type of physics which sees only entropy but now, if we still hold on to this Big Bang cosmology, it seems to be what allows entropy to be the only reigning uh, force in this, in this universe. Um, but it's a big deal if we still have this Big Bang hypothesis, because it's basically saying there is a creation moment. Maybe not one, but, you know, it happens over and over and over and over and over in many, in infinitely many uh, different, different, um, types, different kinds, universes with different physical laws, you know, sometimes just brains, random physical structures, random, uh, you know, gatherings and condensings of atoms that don't necessarily make any sense at all. But I reject this, this approach. I think there's more than entropy. There's also novelty. The arrow of time is not an illusion. Things, living things, consciousnesses, observers, they tend towards novelty. They create. And when these creative beings only acknowledge the material component of their existence, the parts instead of the whole, in other words, um, they see only entropy. But they neglect the one who sees that entropy. They neglect this amazing ability of the observer to observe itself. I mean, when you really take into consideration what the observer is, the whole historical process of it, I think you'd be astonished 